Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for joining us this morning. My name is Joe Schmidt. I'm with Holman's in Nevada. Um, we're excited to be here today at Switch. What brought us here today is to talk with you guys about some of the new workflows that are starting to impact architecture, engineering, and construction. Uh, so general question, how many of you have uh, heard of cloud? And who can give me a definition of cloud? Yeah, that's usually the, the response that I get. They, yeah. they estimate that by the time that th in our lifetime, when we look forward, they look at the way data has been growing, each of us will generate about 4.3 exabytes of data. So all of the iPads sold today doesn't equate the amount of gen data that one person will generate in their life. So when you look at this trend and you go, all right, what's happening? Where's all that stuff going to go? It's got to go into a centralized facility. It's going to go into a centralized location. And it, it's not just this massive amount of data that's going to be stored, not just the fact that mobility is going to change the way that we compute, um, but that, how the way that mobility is being used. Right? Last quarter, for the first time, the number of mobile devices exceeded the number of PCs that were sell, sold. The number of PCs that were sold last quarter was 94 million. Now, how many mobile devices and iPads? So this was the first time it went greater. What do you think the number was? It was 180 million. It's the first time it's ever happened. And not only did it kind of pass the number, it doubled the number of this. And really what it's about is there's been this drive to the cloud. And what's driving it is the fact that we've watched you know, the ubiquitous nature of it, the internet be come to fruition. We've seen where they've married voice and uh, data communications on single lines. They used to be separate, right? The computer manufacturers have started to make it possible to put more compute in a smaller space. Virtualization has become possible. They're creating more powerful computers that uh, deliver more density in the compute environment. And then that, there was this appetite for new applications and solve this problem. And what it's led to is really this innovation of cloud computing because as you start to push stuff out into a centralized location, and then you start to have mobile devices that don't really store a lot of that information, you really see this evolution of cloud and it allows for this paid by the drink kind of consumption of compute. And it's a really powerful trend. But when you look at cloud computing, there are several key things that it needs. Cloud computing needs a place for it to be because that hasn't changed. And that place has to be secure, it has to be reliable, and it has to be available. And it also has to have a lot of powerful tools around it. And then the second thing, you've got to be able to connect to it. So you have to have large pipes to a cloud computing platform. If you don't, it's extremely limiting and almost non-usable. And the third piece is you need to make sure that you have choice. Because as an enterprise, when you start to look at your cloud roadmap and you put together a cloud strategy, no one cloud is going to solve all your problems. And cloud isn't the answer. It's just another way to have a solution. And so you've got to have choice as that starts this to develop. This is the facility that we're in. We're actually kind of in the middle of it right now. And we talked about this idea of cloud computing needs scale. At 407,000 square feet, we can fit 11 football fields inside this facility. So no, we have 100 megawatts of power committed to this facility. Now to put that in perspective, that's the same amount of, that's more power than the wind the Bellagio and the Venetian have in their campuses all combined. So in each of these air handling systems, he designed four methods of cooling. Direct expansion, indirect evaporative, direct evaporative, and chilled water. And there's a weather station on every one of these units. And based upon the weather, our proprietary application living data center will choose the most efficient method of cooling at that time and that place. And it helps deliver on that efficiency. Because these units sit on the outside of the data center, we have the ability to bring in outside air to cool the data center. And what that leads is to an extremely efficient design. In traditional data centers, for every kilowatt of energy that goes into a server, they usually spend three to four kilowatts to cool it. Here in the SuperNAP. For every kilowatt of energy that goes into a server, we only spend a quarter of a kilowatt to cool it. That's a four to 500 percent efficiency improvement. Now the other element of this equation that's critical is this environment has to be up 100 percent. Not only do we have that, but on the outside of the data center, or is our generator set, at full build out, we'll have 50 2.8 megawatt diesel generators for a total of 140 megawatts of generating capacity. The other element of this that's critical is connectivity. You know, you've got to be able to connect to this environment so that we actually have over two dozen carriers and networks on net right here within this facility. So when you talk about connecting to other locations or connecting to the internet and providing capacity, when, when that facility was acquired, we have over 4,000 fibers that are there. 
And those fibers have a wealth of capacity. So, and you'll see some of the examples when we walk out in the data center. The market cap of our customers here is over a trillion and a half dollars. And so no matter how big you are, you get to buy with their power. It can reduce your costs over 30 to 40% and give you the diversity necessary to deliver these types of services in an effective way. You know, when you look out on the data center floor, understand none of the infrastructure, the gear that you see is ours. That's all our customers. We're not a hosting provider. Those are our cloud providers, customers. It's their infrastructure. They are able to come in and manage them themselves. But we have over 4,000 individuals that are badged to come in and out of this facility. And more than 2,000 of them have Nevada's driver's licenses. And it was designed to operate in any environment under any conditions. You know, in India, the power goes out six times a day. This facility, as it's designed, the power could go out six times a day and it would have zero impact to our customers. There we go. So some of you have asked about how you can get involved. So Holmans and Switch will be working together to come up with a variety of solutions in the coming months that you could take advantage of. What Switch and their partners and Holmans are hoping to be able to convey to you today is that there are lots of opportunities um, to make the data available to you and your customers and to your staff in ways that are maybe more interesting than you've thought of before. Um, I think we've talked a little bit today around this. This is the governor's economic plan for development. We've supported many of these markets for a long, long time at Holman's. We've been in the community for 35 years. So we deal with architects, engineers, and contractors, mining, uh, hotel casinos. You're seeing a lot of business IT here today. Um, so maybe Justin can just speak for a minute or two to some of the impact about what they're sure, doing. Yeah. So like I said before, I'm Justin McVeigh. I'm the lead for IT. Uh, economic development for the state of Nevada. I work in the governor's office. Um, our new economic development strategy is fairly new. Um, last year, SRI Brookings came out with a study on Nevada talking specifically about what were some of our opportunities for looking into what they called sectors or industries, essentially, that there's a potential for Nevada to grow, but it's never really been looked at before as an opportunity for that economic development growth. So they came up with a fairly substantial report. Uh, what are the needs of the industry? How do we grow a workforce to, to meet those needs? And from a state perspective, what incentives or opportunities can we put in place, either policies or removing policies that may be hindering the growth of that industry? And we have, uh, you know, we, ha we have a, 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 an opportunity here to change the way uh, the business uh, typically is done in Nevada by concentrating on these sectors.